Hello, this is Peter from Educomondo, and a warm welcome to our Steam project number 11, called the Hourglass. This is a teacher edition, in which we pay attention to technical and pedagogical explanations. We also give classroom management tips in order to make your Steam lessons engaging and exciting. I want to remind you that this is for the absolute beginning STEAM teacher. No prior knowledge of programming or electronics is required. We call this level the Explorer level. The purpose of today's project is to learn about a new component, the tilt switch, also known as a ball switch. We will learn about the different ways switches and sensors are available on the market. We will program multiple LEDs, work as a team and do some logical fault finding in case we get error messages. In this lesson we are going to use a tilt switch or a ball switch. Its purpose is quite similar to the button switch, namely to close or open a circuit. On the whiteboard, draw the inside and working principle of the tilt switch. In essence, this is a very simple device that contains two wires and a metal ball in an outer casing. When standing vertically on its legs, the metal ball makes contact between the two legs. This way, the ball creates a closed circuit. When we move the switch to a tilted or upside-down position, the metal ball rolls away from the two legs and opens the circuit. For this project, we are going to use a tilt switch that is soldered on a small print plate. There are multiple advantages using this type of switch or sensor. To begin with, the pull-up resistor of 10,000 ohm is already integrated on the board. And although very small, you can still measure it to check the exact value. You can see that our resistor is exactly 10,000 ohm. The second advantage is that it has these holes which allow for easy mounting in, for example, robotic projects. And lastly, it has three firm legs, the positive, negative and the signal pin. Let's distribute the components to your students. We start with a microcontroller and a breadboard, one integrated tilt switch, or if you don't have it, a separate switch, five LEDs, five resistors of 220 ohm, And in case you have a separate switch, a resistor of 10,000 ohm is also needed. Five white jumper cables, a red and a black jumper cable, an orange jumper cable, two preformed wires, a short and a somewhat longer one. And of course, let us not forget the most important part, the cardboard hourglass. Show your students this image. It will help them to put the components in the right places. You can leave this image on your computer in front of the class or project it on a wall or whiteboard. Give your students 10 minutes to build a project on their own. 
By now, they should be able to do this quite quickly. Let's start building. First, we install the LEDs. The negative legs will share the negative rail on top of the breadboard. The long legs are the positive legs. Each LED is connected via a 220 ohm resistor to a digital pin. In our project, we use the pins 7 to 11. The tilt switch has three pins, a positive, a negative and a signal pin. We connect the signal pin to digital pin number 3 on the microcontroller. We connect the positive pin to the 5 volt supply. And with a small preformed cable, we connect the negative pin to the bottom negative rail. When installing a separate switch with the 10,000 ohm pull-up resistor, remind your class of the previous lesson. The listening pin has to be connected between the pull-up resistor and the tilt switch. With the larger preformed cable, we connect the upper with the lower negative rail to ensure that the LEDs are properly connected to the ground. We connect the negative rail to one of the ground pins of the microcontroller and last but not least, we fit the cardboard hourglass over the five LEDs. Ask your students to connect the microcontroller to their computers and let them open the Arduino Integrated Development Environment. At the top, they should create a new sketch called Lesson 11 Hourglass. This is also the right place to declare your variables. The first variable is the input pin that will read whether the switch is open or closed. We know that that pin will either be a 0 or a 1, so we need to declare a variable for that. And we call it the tilt state. We could declare each pin connected to the LED, but it will be smarter to have the microcontroller do this for us in the setup space. But we do need a variable that will count between the pins 7 and 11. And we use the letter J for that. So INTJ semicolon. And it never hurts to declare a delay variable. We set it at one second. Now we can go to the setup area. So we are going to set the pin mode for the five pins one by one using a simple FOR command. FOR, in between brackets, J equals 7, because it's our first pin, and for as long as J is smaller than 12, so up to 11, it is going to be J plus 1. And what do we do? We will use a pin mode and tell them that J is an output. So this means that for pin number 7 and for as long as we have not reached pin number 12, the pin mode of the pin is an output. The tilt pin 
is an input. So we declare it as pin mode in between brackets tilt pin comma input. Now to start with we just ensure that all LEDs are off by setting them all to low. For J equals 7, and for as long as J is smaller than 12, J equals as J plus 1, or as it can also be written as J plus plus. And we say a digital write J comma low. Because it is useful to check on the monitor what the state of the tilt pin will be, we start the serial monitor by using the serial.begin command. That's it for the setup. Now we can go to the void loop section. We start by defining the variable tilt state as the digital read on the tilt pin. Here we can already add the serial.println command, so we will be able to check the state on the monitor. Very much like we had with the push button, we use an if statement when equal to zero. And remind your students that we use a double equal sign. So if the tilt state equals to zero and we use our four variables, Then we do a digital write to the pin J as high and we end with a delay and closing the curly brackets. And to reverse the hourglass we go for the opposite. If the tilt state is equals to 1 And because we are calculating backwards, we write for j equals 11, because that's the last pin. And for as long as j is larger than 6, because 7 is our last pin, we just have to subtract 1 from j. And what do we do? We do a digital write and put J to low. And we end with a delay. Just make sure that you end the program with sufficient curly brackets. So that's it for the programming. Your class is now ready to upload the program and start tilting their breadboards. The hourglasses should go up and down. Now be aware that the tilt switch is not the most accurate switch. It may from time to time malfunction. If it doesn't work with some of the groups, tell them not to panic. Tracking and correcting errors is one of the most important skills in programming. Encourage them to do some logical fault finding by asking the following questions. 
What was the error message of the microcontroller? Did you end all commands with a semicolon? Did you spell all commands correctly? Did you put the wires in the right pins? Did you declare the right pin numbers as variables? Are all connections on the breadboard firm? Maybe some of the components are broken. This concludes our project number 11, the hourglass. What did we learn? Well, we learned about the tilt switch, also known as a ball switch. We have seen different form factors of sensors and switches. We programmed multiple LEDs and most importantly, worked as a team and where necessarily conducted some logical fault finding. In this lesson we have been talking about an hourglass as a measurement of time. Here are some ideas for assignments related to time. Which clock is the most accurate in the world? Why is time not measured in a decimal system. Do you know how much time you spent on different things during a day? It may be a fun idea to let your students keep a diary for a couple of days and note down their activities and the timing. And for the older students, can you find an easy explanation of Einstein's theories of relativity and present this in one of our next lessons. I hope that you and your class enjoyed this project and that they are eager to start with project number 11. In that lesson we will work with a passive infrared sensor to pick up the motions of a person or animal. We will build a guard dog that alerts us when a person or animal is getting too close. Bye bye for now and see you in the next lesson.